Uh, I'm Attorney General T.J. Donovan. With me today is Justin Jiren from the Chittenden County State's Attorney's Office, uh, Dominica Padula, who is the Chief of the Attorney General's Criminal Division, and Major Ingrid Jonas from the Vermont State Police. Uh, I want to acknowledge that Doug Kilburn's uh, widow, Sherry Kilburn, uh, is with us today, as well as Doug's and Sherry's son, Tyler, uh, is here as well. Uh, Tyler and Sherry will have a statement to make to the media uh, after uh, we are done. I want to thank Sherry and Tyler for being here today. Uh, earlier this week, uh, I met with uh, Sherry and Tyler uh, to inform them of my decision. I want to thank them uh, for their time uh, that they spent with us. I want to thank them for their presence here today. Uh, we are here to announce our conclusion of the review of the use of force incident involving Burlington Police Officer Corey Campbell uh, with Douglas Kilborn. Uh, we have reviewed the officer use of force incident that occurred on March 11, 2019 in Burlington. The Attorney General's Office is declining to prosecute Burlington Police Officer Corey Campbell for charges related to the use of force against Douglas Kilborn. Based on the totality of circumstances, I've concluded that it was reasonable and justified for Officer Campbell to use force to defend himself. It should be noted that Officer Campbell's actions in his second interaction with Mr. Kilburn, while justified under the law, did contribute to the situation in which the need for self-defense arose. Training and accountability on de-escalation techniques are essential to ensuring that officers are not putting themselves and citizens in danger. It's our hope that the Burlington Police Department will take necessary steps to ensure that their department is equipped with the tools that they need to effectively and safely respond to members of our community in crisis. In reaching this decision, our office considered the opinion of a police use of force expert Steve Iams, whose report will be made public after the conclusion of this uh, press conference, and reviewed all the materials provided by the Vermont State Police who conducted a very thorough investigation into this matter. The facts are as follows. On March 11, 2019, Burlington Police Officer Corey Campbell was dispatched by the BPD to the Uni University of Vermont Medical Center for an individual yelling in the waiting room to the point of spitting and arguing with security and refusing to leave. When Officer Campbell arrived at UVM Medical, he encountered the individual Douglas Kilburn. Prior to Officer Kilburn's arrival, Mr. Kilburn had been at the hospital with his wife, Sherry, who was receiving treatment. When Officer Campbell arrived at UVM Medical, he met Mr. Kilburn in the parking lot. After speaking with Mr. Kilburn, Officer Campbell then spoke with UVM Medical Security, and they agreed that Officer Campbell would escort Mr. Kilburn through the emergency department to his wife's room. Officer Campbell returned to Mr. Kilburn and escorted him through the emergency department to Sherry's room. Officer Campbell asked Mr. Kilburn to remain civil before leaving him in his room. After a brief discussion with the medical staff, Officer Campbell left the area. Campbell was then dispatched to provide a ride from the emergency department to a shelter for another unrelated individual. Soon after Campbell left Mr. Kilburn in his wife's room at the hospital, staff again requested UVM medical security to, re to remove Mr. Kilburn from his wife's room, making the decision that his behavior was not conducive to his wife's health, who was critically ill. UVM medical security officers asked Mr. Kilburn to leave and escorted him out of the hospital. Mr. Kilburn swore and screamed at them the entire way. Short time later, UVM Medical Security Officer Heather Gray observed Mr. Kilburn pull his vehicle into the ambulance bay of the emergency department. This is a restricted area. Signs to that effect. Officer Gray approached Mr. Kilburn in the ambulance bay. At the same time, Officer Campbell was also exiting the emergency department with the individual he was transporting to the shelter. UVM Medical Security Officer Gray confronted Mr. Kilburn, telling him he had to move his vehicle from the area. Kilburn continued to argue with her and did not move his vehicle. Officer Campbell asked UVM Medical Security Officer Gray if they were going to trespass Mr. Kilburn, and she stated she did not know. Mr. Kilburn then, then said they did not need to trespass him as he was leaving. Mr. Kilburn started to drive away. 
he stopped and pointed to the vehicle saying, quote, Christ, I've known that guy for 30 years. The following exchange ensued. Officer Campbell, shut the F up and leave. Go, they don't want you here. Mr. Kilburn, did you just swear at me? Officer Campbell, yes I did. Mr. Kilburn, you're an effing punk. Officer Campbell, yeah, whatever. Officer Campbell then began to walk away. Mr. Kilburn, get the F before I come over here. After this exchange, Officer Campbell turned around and approached Mr. Kilburn's vehicle. At the same time, Mr. Kilburn placed his vehicle in park and began to exit his vehicle. UVM Medical Security Officer Gray yelled no at Mr. Kilburn. As Officer Campbell approached the vehicle, the driver's side of Mr. Kilburn's vehicle opened and Mr. B Kilburn began to get out saying, he ain't got the right to swear at me. Officer Campbell then put his right hand on the door and then on Mr. Kilburn's left shoulder as Mr. Kilburn continued to exit the vehicle with the seatbelt still on his left shoulder. Mr. Kilburn repeated, you ain't got the right to swear at me. Officer Campbell grabbed Mr. Kilburn's left arm with his right hand and attempted to put, be, put it behind Mr. Kilburn's back. Mr. Kilburn continued to move forward, getting out of the vehicle. Once out of the vehicle, Mr. Kilburn punched Officer Campbell with his right fist, hitting Officer Campbell's lower left jaw. Officer Campbell then punched Mr. Kilburn in the right area three times with a closed fist as Mr. Kilburn was brought to the ground. UVM Security Officer Richard Howard then aided Officer Campbell in securing Mr. Kilburn and placing handcuffs, placing him in handcuffs. Mr. Kilburn sustained injuries to his face as a result of being punched and was immediately treated at UVM Medical. He was arrested and charged with a disorderly conduct and assault on a police officer March 11, 2019 and released on conditions of release. Mr. Kilburn was released from UVM Medical on March 12th. On March 14th, members of the Burlington Police Department conducted a welfare check at the request of Sherry Kilburn. At Mr. Kilburn's residence, officers found Mr. Kilburn deceased in his bed. The Office of the Chief Medical Examiner of Vermont conducted a final, final autopsy report, and Vermont Chief Medical Examiner Dr. Stephen Shapiro made the following findings, quote, cause of death, undetermined terminal mechanism due to multiple underlying conditions, contributory cause, hypertension, cardiac and cerebral vascular disease, obesity, skull fractures due to blunt impact, manner of death, homicide, struck by other. The medical examiner by law has only five options to choose from in the manner of death category. Natural, homicide, accidental, suicide, or undetermined. Dr. Shapiro included in further clarifying statement that homicide is a medical, not a legal designation. The Attorney General's Office, in thoroughly investigating this matter, consulted with Steve Iamis to review this incident specific to police practices and policy. Steve Iamis is a highly recommended expert on police practices, including use of force, and has trained law enforcement on these issues both here in the United States and abroad. Mr. Iamis evaluated both interactions between Officer Campbell and Mr. Kilburn. In the first interaction, Mr. Iamis noted that Officer Campbell demonstrated empathy, patience, and professionalism in regard to Mr. Kilburn. However, that was not the analysis of his second interaction. In his second interaction, Mr. Iamis noted two factors that precipitated the onset of Mr. Kilburn's assaultive course of action slash behavior directed at Officer Campbell. According to Mr. Iamis, the first factor was Officer Campbell's language, quote, telling Mr. Kilburn to, quote, shut the F up and leave, go, they don't want you here. And the second precipitating factor was Officer Campbell's, quote, return to Mr. Kil Kilburn's vehicle after walking away. Mr. Iamis noted that, quote, officers should not use profanity when verbally interacting with citizens. And that contemporary police training policy and practice 
generally prohibits officers from using rude or profane language. However, Mr. Iamis concluded that the above precipitating factors did not create, quote, a basis or justification for the assault of behavior directed by Mr. Kilborn towards Officer Campbell. In Mr. Iamis' opinion, close, quote, the closed fist strikes delivered by Officer Campbell in response to Mr. Kilburn's initial closed fist strike were, quote, in self-defense based on adequate cause and provocation and were generally consistent with contemporary police training, policy, and practice. Under Vermont law, a person who kills or wounds another in just and necessary defense of his own life, quote, shall be guiltless. In Vermont, self-defense is justified when, one, the defendant was not the initial aggressor, two, the defendant was justified using a reasonable amount of force against another. And three, he reasonably believed that he was in immediate danger of unlawful bodily harm and that the use of such force was necessary to avoid the danger. In our analysis, based on the totality of the circumstances, we concluded that it was reasonable for Officer Campbell to use force to defend himself. Officer Campbell was not the initial aggressor as Mr. Kilburn delivered the first punch, a closed fist strike to Officer Campbell. Second, Officer Campbell is justified in using a reasonable amount of force against Mr. Kilburn. Officer Campbell, Officer Campbell used a closed fist to strike against Mr. Kilburn. Officer Campbell did not employ any other weapon in his response to being hit. And Officer Campbell was reasonable to believe that he was A, in immediate danger, for, immediate danger of unlawful bodily harm, and his use of such force was necessary to avoid this danger. Mr. Kilburn had already been assaulted and Officer Campbell's force was necessary to avoid this danger from continuing. It should be noted that while Officer Campbell's initial interaction with Mr. Kilburn showed exemplary tactics and compassion, his second interaction did not. Officer Campbell's use of foul language and antagonistic behavior did not de-escalate the situation, which ultimately put him in a position where it was necessary to physically defend himself. It's our hope, and I know it's the Kilburn's hope, that the Burlington Police Department will con commit to de-escalation training, to continue to commit to de-escalation training for their officers to ensure that their department is equipped with the tools they need to effectively and safely respond to members of our community in crisis. I wanna note that Doug Kilburn was in crisis that day at the hospital. His wife, Sherry, was in critical condition up at the hospital. He was trying to see her. This was a tragic situation that frankly could have been avoided. I spoke to the mayor last night and I spoke to the chief this morning. Uh, they've committed to work, to continuing to working on de-escalation tactics. When we were talking about what those tactics look like internally, my chief, the criminal division, Dominica Padula said, tools like empathy, and compassion, and kindness are just as effective as a taser or any other weapon. This is a challenge, not just in the city of Burlington, this is a challenge in our entire state. We have far too many of these cases happening. We seem to be dealing with these monthly, if not weekly. The legal system looks at a finite period of time to determine whether or not these are justified in the legal sense. And I want to sh stress that. It is a matter of seconds that we look at to determine whether or not legally these are justified. We need to do a better job. We need to look towards other jurisdictions to see how they're handling these questions of use of force. We have to continue to build public trust in our law enforcement, not just in the police, but in the prosecutors as we continue to make these decisions. And we have to be open to challenging the conventional wisdom of how we keep our public safe. I didn't know Doug Kilburn, but I know this, that he was a lot more than these few minutes that are shown on this body camera footage. He was a husband and he was a father and we need to be mindful when we engage in these public debates that we're talking somebody about somebody who has left us, who has died. And we need to be respectful of his memory, respectful of their family 
while still doing our job. As I said, our copy of our use of force experts report uh, is available. It is a public record. I will now turn it over to the office of the Chittenden County State's Attorney. Uh, Chief Deputy Justin Gyron is here uh, to discuss their finding. Uh, as in all use of force cases, uh, this is a concurrent review by the Attorney General's Office and State's Attorney's Offices in the county in which these happen, uh, but they are independent. So with that, let me turn it over to uh, Justin Gyron. Thank you, Dean. Good afternoon. I would like to thank um, Attorney General Donovan and his office for their review of this incident, as well as the Vermont State Police for their very thorough investigation. Uh, I would not um, change anything in terms of what our opinion is from our office. We, we did review the facts, the investigation, came to the same conclusion as the Attorney General's office, and likewise echo the sentiments that uh, this is a very tragic event. Our condolences to uh, Ms. Kilburn and her family for what happened to Douglas Kilburn. But we do agree that in this case, uh, no criminal charges are justified against Officer Corey Campbell. Thank you. Before we open up to questions, I want to uh, acknowledge and thank uh, Major Ingrid Jonas uh, from the Vermont State Police for being here today and, and thank the Vermont State Police uh, for conducting uh, a thorough investigation uh, into this matter. I want to note that on all these cases throughout our state, we look to the state police to do uh, these types of investigations. I know they remain uh, committed under the leadership of Major Jonas and Colonel Birmingham uh, to continuing to develop not only the best practices, but the emerging best practices in this nation uh, to best police uh, our communities in a safe, uh, transparent way where communities have trust and communities feel safe. And we, we, have, we have work to do and we acknowledge that. Uh, so with that, uh, let me open it up to questions. Uh, Douglas Kilburn died while facing, as I understand it, a criminal charge for uh, disorderly conduct uh, as well, and I think an assault on a police officer. Uh, was that charge against him uh, justified as in light of the, the body cam video, which sure. showed that he seemed to swing at the officer in response to the officer putting his no. hand on his wrist? So I believe that was brought by the state's attorney's office. I'll let Mr. Jairus address that. So, uh, yes, the, the, um, the review of the body cam and the investigation, the subsequent investigation by state police, uh, wouldn't change the uh, decision to charge Mr. Kilborn um, as we did. Obviously, the charges were dismissed um, after his death, but uh, there's no reason to think that the, anything we learned afterwards would have changed our decision to charge. It was dismissed by a judge or by your office? By our office. So, it wasn't really a dismissal, it was more opted not to charge because no judge had found probable cause of what you're saying. Well, I I think we, no, I think the court had found probable cause because we filed the charges. So we had to dismiss the charge. So it wasn't, if we didn't just so bring it. So there's an affidavit on file? There should be. Yeah. What can you say about the length of time that this review took? Um, in the instance of the officer involved shooting Montpelier, that took a matter of, I believe, maybe a month. This has been several months later. Just want to look at the timing of the review of this. Sure. Um, I can certainly speak for uh, myself and Ms. Padula and others in my office. Uh, I was troubled by this. Uh, I think we're all troubled by what happened here. And I think when you look at that expert uh, opinion, um, the decision uh, by Campbell to engage uh, Mr. Kilburn and use use uh, that language um, escalated the situation at that point in time. And I thought uh, that it was incredibly important to bring in an independent third party expert in the use of force to look at this and provide that expertise and opine whether or not that his actions were reasonable under the circumstances because uh, we were troubled by what we saw uh, on that video. And uh, the length of time was because we were waiting for the expert's report. How did you find this independent expert? 
Uh, he's actually used and worked with, with VSP uh, and uh, I think is very well, well regarded by the Vermont State Police. What was most troubling to you about the interaction? Because it, it could have been avoided. That's the bottom line. It could have been avoided. Did anyone in the investigation end up talking to Campbell? No. Interviewing him? Nope. Um, would that potentially have made a difference in any part of this investigation? Look, everybody has a right not to be interviewed. Uh, you know, we're, we're having this debate right now about whether or not uh, police officers should uh, be entitled to review body camera footage before they're interviewed by the police. Uh, I agree with the Vermont State Police uh, that they should not. Uh, here's why. Any other suspect in any part of this state today that is interviewed by any member of law enforcement is not going to be presented evidence before they're interviewed. No, but they may have seen it in you know somebody else's video or photos. But they're not given. But they're not giving it to them by law enforcement. That, that's entirely different. And this comes down to, to public trust, and I think I'll let Major Jonas speak about this. Is, uh, we want their, their perceptions of, of what they remember, but let me turn it over to Major Jonas to talk about that. Yeah, I think TJ said it well, but in an investigation like this, we're looking for the independent recollection uh, from the, the officer. We're looking for their authentic um, perspective on it. Um, we have the video, so that is one piece of evidence, but we're really looking um, for their perception because the determining factor in cases like this really is the perception of the officer in terms of the threat. Do you think Officer Campbell should face discipline in the Burlington Police Department? That's up to the Burlington Police Department. Did you invite anybody from Burlington uh, to be here today? No, I did not. I, I talked to the mayor. I mean, they had a lot to say about it. Why wouldn't you invite the mayor or the chief in particular since he seems to have some thoughts on this? because I think we wanted to be as respectful as we possibly could to the Kilburn family today. Uh, as I said earlier, um, Doug Kilburn died. And this isn't about a, a, a debate. Uh, we have a job to do, and we're gonna do our job, but I think we can do our job incredibly respectfully um, uh, to uh, Mrs. Kilburn and to, to Tyler Kilburn. Um, and, mom. Yep, and uh, I think sometimes um, we all lose sight that there's a community member here and families who are grieving and um, uh, I talked to him, I informed him of, of, of our decision at a very uh, productive call with both the mayor and the chief. Uh, they are committed to uh, policing the best possible way uh, in the city of Burlington and as we said, we all can do better. Uh, I include myself in that definition. We all can do better. There, there's, there's too much of this going on in our state. When you say there's too much of this going on in our state, what's happening here and, and what needs to be done? I, I, I don't know what's happening here. Um, I, I would say, and I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but we're doing a lot of these. Um, and I think that we want to make sure that uh, everybody feels safe. Um, not specific to this case. I think mental illness is a major issue in this state. The Vermont State Police do a tremendous job uh, in policing in this state. We have to continue to, uh, I think, learn how to best de-escalate and to talk to people. Um, I know the city of San Antonio has a, has a great program uh, in their policing and interacting with folks who are, who are in crisis. And the police have a tough job. Uh, let's, let's be honest about it. Um, uh, when there's a crisis, the police are called. And we have to have a conversation in our state about do we want the police responding to everything because they do respond to everything and a lot of those calls are mental health calls. Or do we have community outreach? Uh, are we willing to fund those uh, programs? Are we willing to train on them? So it's a lot, it's a complicated, it's a complicated issue. I don't think there's any easy answers, but I think we all remain committed uh, to doing this better, to making sure that Vermonters feel safe, to making sure that Vermonters feel safe to call the police. And that comes down to public trust. So You, you mentioned trust in your opening comments and everything. I'm just wondering, you and your predecessor are like one for 45 now for filing charges against police and use of force in cases. So one case you did file, called a grand jury, 
why no grand jury in this to let the citizens of Jimmy County yeah. determine whether this conduct yeah. was proper or improper mm -hmm. rather than you who has a record of not prosecuting? Well, we look at the facts and that's our job. And you talk about transparency and the need for transparency, you know as well as I do, uh, the downside to a grand jury is that um, they could indict. Or they could not, and then, and then, then it would, nothing would be released. Oh, you can release. Nothing would be released. A grand, a grand jury proceeding is secret, Mike. You and I both you, know you, that. You, you are free to talk about it. Your press have talked about grand jury. I, I, I would respectfully, I would, I would respectfully disagree with you on that. I'll show you. Um, and I think our job is to make decisions based on the facts, to do it in a transparent way that the public, while they may not agree. Uh, it can acknowledge and understand the reasons uh, why we made a decision uh, and to do it in, in a way that is, as I said, transparent. So whether people agree or disagree, at least they understand uh, the factors and the facts uh, for which we made our decision on. In, in mid-September, when refiling the charge against I Guru Ram, you said um, the community hears the evidence, all the evidence, and they get to the side. If you were very interested in the community weighing in on that case, what's different about this one? I'm not sure I understand your question. Each case is different, and you go by the facts and the evidence. We reviewed the facts and the evidence, and we ruled that the use of force used was reasonable. Uh, therefore, there is no criminal charge. So, question. This is the second case that I've heard where you've uh, presented a press conference similar to this one that our scope of the law is too limited yep. in situations like this. Um, but yet I have yet to see anything legally change as a result of that. And as you mentioned in your comments, we keep coming back to these kinds of cases. Yep. At what point do we actually take a look at what our law says is allowed and change it if we're going to keep coming back to the same yeah. statement at press conferences about use of force sure. incidents? I think you've had some conversations this, this session. Uh, I think this is incredibly complicated. I, I think there is no easy answer. Um, and I think what we struggle with is um, the facts, which I articulated, really come to add to that, those matter of seconds. And I think there is a whole other story uh, that we try to tell about why was Doug Kilburn at the hospital? Why was he, why was he struggling that day? What was going on with Sherry? Um, and I, I think understanding the full context um, of the situation is incredibly important, but when you get into the use of force and whether or not something's justified, you're gonna look at the, those seconds where force is presented and then the question is, was that reasonable how this person responded to that force directed at him or her? And I think, you know, I know California has changed their law and I'm not endorsing the, the, the change in California. What I am endorsing is a conversation about it. But would you support, I mean, if that conversation comes up, expanding that window like like California has done? I, I, what I would support is a conversation and to challenge the, the conventional wisdom of our current practice. And what that means, Liam, whether or not that's going to be a change, I don't know. I always, what I do know is this, that we have to take a critical look at our system and to get all the facts and the evidence and see what works. I mean, you seem to have an issue, though, or at least are troubled by some of this. So <clears throat> supporting a conversation is easy, but supporting change is more difficult. So, I mean, where, where would you come down? Well, it would also be unreasonable to support change when you're not f fully uh, cognizant of all the nuances of the law, and I'm not there yet. And I think we got to do more work, but uh, I think any prosecutor, any police officer, any member of our community is going to be troubled by this. Uh, somebody lost their life. I'm troubled by that. How is the law too limited? I, you know, because you look at seconds and you look at use of force, and it's the force directed directed at you, and whether or not the force that you respond with is is reasonable. And in this incident, and many others. That is a matter of seconds, and I think that when we look at the totality of circumstances, somehow expanding that and looking at perhaps at uh, some of the other factors is something that we should do. The, the other part is to acknowledge that, you know, just changing law is not going to solve this. We have to do a better way of building trust in our community and responding to mental, mental illness in our community. Would your decision in this case be different if you had been able to look at the wider? I don't know. It depends on the standard of law. It depends on the standard of review. And 
I made a decision based on our current law. I'm confident in my decision. Um, I, my point simply is that uh, I am troubled by this. Anytime somebody loses uh, their lives uh, is troubling. We have to legally justify it or not. I don't make any of these decisions lightly, and it troubles me. Was any? Oh, sorry. Okay. No. Keep uh, 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 on, a, on a different subject, uh, what did you say to the uh, uh, city of Burlington when you uh, uh, when you called them up uh, during during the Lizzo's press conference? Say that again. Uh, after after uh, Douglas Kilburn died, Brandon Del Pozo hosted a press conference in which I understand you made a call to city officials during the press conference to say something. During the investigation, you wouldn't comment on it, saying the investigation was not going one way so. Well, generally, my private conversations are my private conversations. Um, but I think what I most likely said was, let the process play out. Did they? Yeah, they did. I mean, the, the I mean, Aiden and Derek looked at the, the reporting. You know, they looked at the mayor and the chief had been trying to maybe like s slow the release of the medical examiner's report. I mean, was that part of your review at all? The, the actions taken by we did not review the actions of city officials. Do you have any comment on? Will you? No, I won't. Um, Why not? I I think that we have to be mindful and respectful that somebody lost their life. Doug Kilburn died here. And he died uh, with involvement with a member of the police. That triggers a review by the state's attorney and my office. And if we're talking about public trust, then you have to let the process play out. And you have to let this process play out as it would in any other case. And I don't think in any other case would you have had uh, that type of press conference, frankly, and uh, treat people with respect, treat people fairly, uh, and do your job. And I think that's what we should be doing. Why not, why not go and check to see why the mayor and the chief were trying to redirect how this thing was being done? I'm not going to have full transparency. I, our our, our, our review has concluded. Um, whether uh, uh, our review is concluded, the, the governor's office had said that the interventions by the city city officials were borderline unethical. Uh, do you feel the same way? As I said, I don't think you would have seen that press conference in any other case. And you want to treat people fairly, you want to treat people respectfully, you want to treat them like this, anything else. At the end of the day, you let the process play out. And you let independent prosecutors, investigators do their job. That's, well, that's how you build I'm the public. I'm not sure I understand, because you, you, you said you felt like they, they let the process play out, but it also sounds like you didn't think the conference is appropriate. Well, I think I'm being incredibly clear. I called because I was concerned. I called during the press conference. That's been reported. I told you why I called, and since that day, the process has played out. Did you look at all at the medical examiner's report? I mean, the, you know, the, the chief and the mayor and were raising questions or concerns about that. Was that part of your review at all? No. In this, in, other than that it was a piece of evidence, the medical examiner, as he said, it made a medical diagnosis. Um, you have cause of death, uh, which you he articulated many different factors, and then you have manner of death, and he has five choices to make, um, and he made his decision. The fact of the matter, there was a use of force. That then triggers a review by us. We then determine whether or not a crime occurred. So we've talked about this press conference, but I don't think you've addressed the fact that the mayor and police chief reached out to the uh, Department of Health chief, which is what the Scott administration officials were questioning is, you know, ethical or not. Do you think that decision to reach out and question the results of that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the city of Burlington a answer those questions, and I'm sure those questions will be brought up in different venues. One question. Did anyone, um, as part of this investigation, check why the hospital released Mr. Kilburn, and then he later died at his home from injuries in part that he sustained? That Was there any investigation or question on why he was released when he was 
clearly not formal. That's not part of our review. Uh, we looked at whether or not Officer Campbell's conduct arose to the level of a crime. Uh, I'm sure your review was consistent with that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it wasn't part of our review to go and talk to the hospital about uh, the care that Mr. Kilburn received. Does it, I'm curious, does it actually look at that? I think in different venues, those questions may be asked. What venue would that be? I think in different venues, those questions may be asked. Which one? Other questions? The Burlington Police have been pretty vocal about their use of force training. Do you see anything lacking in that training? I go back to what Dominica Padula said earlier about how we how we de-escalate and what we use as tools. And I think meeting people where they are, oftentimes in crisis, uh, understanding um, why they're in crisis, asking those questions, demonstrating uh, compassion and empathy uh, are effective tools and sometimes just listening. And I know when you look at the city of uh, San Antonio, their outreach is really based on that. Meeting people where they are and simply listening and understanding as a way to de-escalate. Frankly, in this case, Officer Campbell demonstrated that with his first interaction, uh, but it was a completely different interaction uh, the second time he encountered Doug Kilburn. And I think that's, that's, that's troubling to me uh, that um, and I think the, the expert talks about this, that he really was an exemplary police officer, that first interaction. He was compassionate, he was demonstrating empathy, and he was trying to solve a problem. Um, but that did not happen the second time they met. What's the status of Officer Campbell right now? I don't know, I think, I know you'd have to ask Burlington Police. My understanding is that Officer Campbell is on um, uh, He's not doing uh, his regular duties. He's, I think he's doing administrative type tasks inside the department until this review is complete. So I'm sure that they'll reassess after today's decision. Thank you, so let me now turn Can it over. Can he uh, return to the street to, before he gets a little more training? That, that is a question for the Burlington Police Department and the mayor. If they ask you your opinion? I will give them my opinion in a confidential manner. Uh, with that, let me turn it over to uh, Tyler and Sherry Kilburn. Thank you. To begin, I want to thank TJ Donovan uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak and address you all today. I'll be reading a statement and I, I personally will not be answering any questions at the conclusion. While we do not agree with the decision that was made, I would like to thank the detectives and TJ Donovan's office for the hard work, dedication, and compassion they showed my family. What happened that day between my father and Officer Campbell was a tragedy, a tragedy that was further corrupted by the insider politics of Burlington Police Chief Del Pozo and Mayor Merle Weinberger. When emails were sent demanding that the chief medical examiner change or alter his ruling, you willingly interfered in an ongoing investigation, and this behavior can no longer be tolerated. I find it appalling that you, as a chief of police, would interfere with an ongoing investigation with cooperation from the mayor's office. You take this career path knowing you must always hold yourself to a higher standard. You failed, Mr. Del Pozo. Mr. Mayor, you failed. You failed by allowing the Burlington Police Department to use and abuse your office to further their agenda. I beg of you to do better. I'm not asking for perfection. Just be better. Improve so that no other family has to endure a tragedy such as this. Be better so that we, that we can keep our, our family members alive. This cannot happen again. It's your job to fix it. Now you need to fix it. My dad was an incredibly loving man. He was an avid sports fan and was incredibly talented musician, among many other wonderful traits that he had. Please keep in mind that in recent times, after suffering multiple strokes, that my dad struggled with his mental health. It was a daily battle for him, as it is for most of us. He was winning this fight. He was getting better each and every day with hard work and dedication. Every day was an improvement. 
I implore each and every one of us to remember that my dad was so much more than the few seconds that changed our lives forever. He was so much more than the few seconds you all judge. He loved his, he loved my mother with every inch of his being. He loved his mom, his dad, sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, nephews, friends alike. He loved life and he did not deserve the treatment that he endured. I cannot begin to fathom the fear that was racing through his head that day. I wish I could have taken all the pain away. I would do anything to just have five minutes back so that I can tell him how much I'm sorry and how much I loved him. I'll never get that chance. My dad needed help, not handcuffs. For everybody that's gonna be watching this, if someone needs help, help them. This is not a problem with one solution. It involves each and every one of us. Be understanding that everyone has their own battles, their own demons. It's time we start lifting one another up, not degrading someone's life and legacy. Give a helping hand when it is needed and don't cast judgment upon somebody that you know little to nothing about. Show compassion to a stranger on the street because they feel it, because they look like they're having a bad day. Because we all have no idea what each individual life is going through. We are all human. In closing, go home, hug your loved ones, tell them that you love them, tell them that they matter. One day, the people that we love dear will be nothing more than the memories that we share. Cherish the time that we have. Thank you.